inflation has uh, looks like it's 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 uh, it's been tempered. Uh, they said it will taper off. I don't know if this is necessarily a, a trend already, but it has tempered. Um, uh, stocks are on the rebound. Uh, Heading into the elections, I mean, do you think the, the economy has uh, has uh, has been addressed uh, the issues of inflation and what does that portend uh, in the coming months? No, I don't think it has been addressed. Uh, part of what we are seeing right now, based on the analysis, is just a more favorable oil price, global oil price environment, um, and uh, the focus on fixing rice, which was very belated. Uh, that should have been front-loaded. That should have been acted upon when train one was being rolled out. Uh, and based on the analysis I'm seeing, we should be on the lookout for any further volatility on global oil prices. If that takes place, if there's anything that perturbs the China-US uh, economic arrangement, this could have repercussions on our economy. And of course, that could change the assumptions again of what we're going to be facing. Um, we have to give uh, our economic managers a little bit of slack because not all of these factors are within their control. Mm. But certainly, the communication on inflation expectations and managing our food security, these are things within their control. And we hope that the reformists in that sector of the Duterte administration continue to have a strong hand so that they are not second-guessed and they get uh, the reforms you know, continuously pushed. So you're saying the economy will be a campaign issue. You think it will affect the chances of uh, candidates allied with the administration, and in particular the candidates that the president is endorsing? I think it's a vulnerability because even if inflation somehow tapered off, it's still a positive inflation number. It's not going to be prices going down. It's going to be prices not increasing by not the, the same before. rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's still increasing in many parts of the country. And if you look at some parts like Ilocos, Sambuanga, uh, Bicol, they have high inflation rates. They continue to have high inflation rates. So, so I think it will be a vulnerability. They need to uh, recapture that messaging on the tax reform, spending properly without leakage and without allegations of pork barrel, and making the spending pro poor so that you bring in more Filipinos into the economic story. So, so you agree with that? I mean, yes, uh, so federalism will not be an issue, but the economy will? What, right. what else will be an issue? Peace and order? No, I think what else? nationally it's always been the economy. Yep. Peace and order has always been, for me, a very uh, local candidate issue. Uh, it's, that's why that's, that was the uniqueness of President Duterte's campaign in 2016. He was able to create that niche, but for a group of 12 individuals who would like to win, or in this case, more than 12, but uh, 12 that will win, they need to focus on gut issues, and it's the economy. That's what was shown to us. Even the weakness of the president, if you, want, if you would like to identify yourself as independent of this government, you have to focus on where the president is weak. And what has been the weakness of the opposition was a focus on the war on drugs, which had 74 to 75 percent approval. support. Approval, actually. Uh, which basically it's the same approval of the president. Mm. But if they only focused last year on you know, defining themselves as an alternative, having an alternative view on the economy, that they, they could have niched higher. With, mm. uh, so I believe it's the economy. And when you speak of the economy, not the technical details of it. It's really the cost of daily, mm -hmm. day to day life. It's the lack of job opportunities. It's the uh, job that doesn't pay well. I mean, these are the basic things of those. Well, as, as you noted, in, in the last elections, uh, making drugs, crime, peace and order the top uh, issue was sort of a novelty that allowed the president to yes. really differentiate himself. In the 2019 uh, elections, does the messaging on drugs and crime carry the same uh, only, luster? Or is it, is it, has it been tarnished only, or is it old already? Uh, General Bato could carry that C because you cannot suddenly reinvent yourself and say mm. I'm for this because nobody has that history. Problem with General Bato, he lost the momentum when he had to retire ahead of the campaign. So no, somebody cannot just introduce himself by the second week of February and I'm a crusader against mm. drugs because they have not done it for the past week. But Bato de la Rosa might create that niche for him. I agree uh, that the economy will still be the will really be the center of uh, the election issue, but uh, 
to assume that federalism will not be part of it is another matter. Mm -hmm. Let me squeeze in one, one I'm question. I'm not insisting on it, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure really that for those who at least understand yeah. it, yeah. it uh, definitely yeah. okay. has to matter. Let me squeeze in an issue that is certainly not going to be an election issue mm. or a campaign issue, but I, I think it's an issue that's close to your hearts. Um, Political party reform, uh, of course, uh, part of it was in, in, in the no, draft, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but given the fact that it's, it's in, in limbo right now, uh, you're looking at issues that I think in the medium and long term are very important to, to all of you, uh, political party reform, anti-dynasty and all that, what are the chances? Three, I remember that we were able to pass it in the House, we were able to pass it to the committee level in, yeah. in the Senate, but there are some, it's always been, uh, it, it fails to move forward because of interest and ambition of certain yeah. people. In 2004, when we, I thought it would make it That's February, right. it was the ambition of certain in, independent senators. One of them is dead already, the other <laughs> one is running again. Uh, because they know that suddenly, it's not about who you, it's not the personality, yeah. it's the party. So our, our problem is uh, everybody acts as if it's about their personality, mm. not the party. We and were expecting it to be passed already in the Senate. It was, uh, in fact, there was a, uh, hearing then, no? and then suddenly they showed uh, a video on the environment, apparently because of uh, a mysterious call. So you, <laughs> so it, uh, that's right. So in other words, in other words, uh, for a while, uh, everyone, uh, I mean, all the organizations pushing for party uh, reform were already uh, confident it will pass, but mm -hmm. then suddenly that happened. Just one more on the election. Do you think the church will play a pivotal role? Lagi naman. The yeah. church does not bring a vote. No, con considering what's happening no, the, between the, the church, church and the not, president. The church cannot deliver a vote. The Catholic they can, church, they influence. But they, they cannot influence, but they can destroy a reputation of a candidate. Mm -hmm. And for me, the best example mm -hmm. to that is every survey, Senator Flavier is number one. But yeah. he never hit number mm -hmm. one because mm -hmm. suddenly his pro RH yeah. uh, argument suddenly goes out number five. Number Still six. top six. So, but, but surveys is always be number one. It's on top of mind. I always say because, you know, we vote on a Monday and we go to Mass on a <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> and campaign ends on a Saturday <laughs> night. People don't realize that, aside from the machine, the church can destroy, your, can, can destroy your reputation, but not tell you who to vote. 